I have a very interesting EEG today and I will review this EEG and also give you some practical tips how to optimize the recording so that you are able to have a good review of the EEG and you're able to report it uh, appropriately. So let's get started here. So let's start with the clinical history here. So this is a 60 year old man who was transferred to our hospital from a rural hospital for decreased level of consciousness. At the rural hospital, he was witnessed to have a right hemiconvulsion that lasted for 30 minutes. I was told that he had twitching of his right side of his face and the right arm. And this continued on and off for 30 minutes. And at that hospital, he was given a load of valproic acid and levetiracetam. I was told that his twitching had stopped, but the patient was not waking up. Uh, patient was transferred to our university hospital and on examination he was not following commands and he had incomprehensible speech and not moving the right side on examination. So I called the EG technologist and we started recording the EG. Uh, so at the time of review of this EG, this is how the EG, the this is the first page of the EG. Let's see if you can figure out what's wrong with this page here. So basically what I did was I used a 60 cycle notch filter. So this is electrical artifact from the electrical circuit. You have to, if you are a technologist, you want to make sure that the impedance between the electrodes is uh, appropriate and that there are not too many cords lying in close proximity to the EG and that will help you reduce some of the 60 cycle artifact. And if you are a reviewer and if this is an EG that has already been acquired, you can use a notch filter, which I did, and this is what happened to the EG. So the 60 cycle artifact disappeared. Now, as we started recording this EG, uh, you can see, so go back to the previous page here, you see this red line that goes all the way down from this triangle here. So if you right click your mouse on this triangle, you will get rid of the red line. So this is, this is, the red line had disappeared. Now I like reviewing my EEGs with no minor grid lines and I do not like the green background. So you can go to the file and you can go under customize and you can customize the colors, get rid of the uh, minor grid lines and you can change the background color, review background color from green to white which I did and this is how the EG showed up now. Now moving on to the next page here, this is what we see on the EG. Uh, for those who are new to reading EGs, just a reminder, channels that end with an odd number are recording from the left side of the brain, channels that end with the even number are recording from the right side of the brain and channels that end with the letter Z are recording from the midline. And this red line here is recording the ECG, so electrocardiogram. What you see on this page here is these major grid lines are still visible, which we wanted to keep those there. And compare the left side, so channels that are ending with the left side and those ending with the right side, and you see an asymmetry in this EEG. You see some rhythmic slowing more in a delta frequency with some sharp components with all of those waves. This is more prominent on the left side. Now what we are going to do is look at a few other pages. So we move on to the next page and we still see that asymmetry between the left and the right hemisphere. So what you can do next is try to compress that EEG. So the previous page was being recorded as 30 millimeters per second. I changed it to 15 millimeters per second. So if there is slowing and if you want to see if there is any pattern of evolution, any change in frequency and amplitude, sometimes compressing the EG, changing it from 30 millimeters per second to 15 millimeters per second can give you a little better perspective. So this is what I did there. And then I further compressed it to 10 millimeters per second. And you can see a longer recording time and you can see if there is any evolution. So although we see rhythmic slowing in the left hemisphere, there is some slowing on the right hemisphere as well, but more pronounced in the left hemisphere with sharp components, but we do not see a very clear pattern of evolution. 
looking through the EEG through the entire record, I was able to appreciate some evol uh, evolution in frequencies and amplitude, but it was not very straightforward. This is another page from the same uh, EEG as we were recording. You can see there is some, this is compressed to five millimeters per second. So this is much compressed EEG, but you're trying, starting to see that is, there is some very rhythmic activity in the left hemisphere. Now going on to another page from this EEG, now we are back to 15 millimeters per second. You can see the asymmetry between the left and the right hemisphere. This patient had been witnessed to have right hemiconvulsions, so right face and arm twitching, and the patient was still not waking up with this kind of a background on the EEG. So the most concerning thing at this time is that this patient is in non-convulsive status epilepticus, which is coming from the left, uh, which is coming from the left hemisphere of the brain. This is again uh, a different segment of this uh, recording. This should have said patient to open his eyes, not her eyes here. So there is some typo here. And you can see intermittently there is a lot of muscle artifacts. So patient was stiffening and then relaxing. Another page from the same patient. So something to keep in mind is when someone has been seizing for quite some time, and if it is not just a one or two minute seizure, I suspect this patient was seizing for hours. Although the twitching had been stopped by the use of valproic acid and Keppra, this patient was still seizing. And that is the reason you don't see the clear pattern of evolution that sometimes you are able to see much more clearly if the seizure only lasts for 30 seconds to a minute. So seizures that last for a minute or sometimes two minutes have a more defined pattern of evolution, but patients who've been seizing for hours sometimes may just show asymmetric slowing with some sharp components that wax in vain, and you do not always have a clear pattern of evolution in frequencies and amplitude. So you have to keep an open mind uh, as to what criteria you use to uh, identify status epilepticus. Sometimes patients don't follow the typical description as you will see in the literature. This is yet another page from the same patient. Patient, uh, this is the end of the recording here. So I was provided with this EEG once the EEG had been completed. I was not present at the time of this recording. If I was there, I would have asked the technologist to continue the EEG recording while the patient was being treated with anti-epileptic medications because the patient apparently is still seizing at the time that this EEG had been stopped. I was told that this patient did receive anti-epileptic medications after this EEG, after this EEG was reported, and the EEG the next day did not show uh, electrographic seizures. So the clinical pearls from this uh, EEG is that the pattern of evolution in patients with prolonged status epilepticus can be very subtle. Compressing the EEG is a useful tool to see the bigger picture and sometimes you will be able to identify periods of evolution much more clearly. Appropriate use of filters can help you see beyond the artifact. So if there is 60 cycle artifact or muscle artifact, sometimes just uh, using the appropriate filters will help you identify the patterns that are behind those uh, behind that noise. So I end over here. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope to see you at one of the future tutorials. Thank you.